Hey guys, welcome back to EE Tech Reviews, and we got a great quick project. We're gonna be taking a used old Game Boy SP, swapping out the screen, putting in a funny playing IPS screen. I'm gonna go through the parts that you need. I'm gonna go through the installation process, and then at the end, I'll just show you a quick comparison of what it looks like on the new screen. And just to make the story short, do this, it's great. It looks great, there's no tearing of the screen. Everything's bright, it's see, it's seeable. There, there's no general issues and everyone should do this. So please enjoy the rest of the video, guys. All right, let's take a quick look at the parts that you're gonna need to make this cool project very, very simple. And I recommend that you buy this regardless if you're doing this for this project or not. A generic set of bits and screwdriver heads just make every job so much easier. Any electronics you use, I use this exact set right here for all my work and the links in the description if you're interested, but just make sure that you get one with a magnetic pad. Being able to put the screws in order over time as you do a project is just a lifesaver and, and saves you all the headache if you ever lose a screw. Now the next one here, this is the screen itself. It's about 48 bucks. It's not bad. Again, it's for Game Boy Advance SP and it's an IPS screen. And again, it's, this is suitable for whatever type of Game Boy you have, AGS 101 or 001. Really don't worry about it. All you have to do is connect that pin to the pin right on there on the microcontroller here and then plug in the ribbon cable. Probably the hardest part to get if you don't already own an old SP is to go and find an SP that you're willing to rip up and potentially break if you don't do it properly. My suggestion is you find if you don't have an old one, go on eBay, look for a working Game Boy Advance SP, make sure the games can play and that it powers on. If the screen's not working, that's not a big deal because we're literally swapping out the screen. So I went on eBay, I found a, a working one with a pretty bad screen. It was around 40 to 50 bucks. And I just swapped out the screen and all the internals into the new case that I'm gonna show you next. And then just reattached everything, screwed everything back up, and that was it. So again here, this is where you have all the freedom. Just go out and buy any housing that you want, any color. Some are glow-in-the-dark, some are see-through. I put a couple examples in the description if you're looking for some fancier ones or with a cool paint job, etc. Some of them also have no-cut or IPS-ready, meaning you can literally just throw an IPS screen in here, no issues. Some of the normal cases that you'll have this upper part and i'll show you later that there is a portion of plastic you need to cut in order for the larger ips screen to fit in this upper housing not a big deal you take a knife you cut it for a couple of seconds and a couple of minutes and you're done easy flash this is basically a usb memory card that you load up with roms and it enables you to put into one cartridge and it has its own custom firmware on there and that's great if you want to back up your games or you want the ability to save or pause, etc. The quick fix, if it's an old Game Boy, it's probably got a dead battery by now. You can go get a cheap battery that you just literally swap in and out. What I did, and I'm not going to go through the whole process, basically you can get a, a higher capacity battery. And Mako, who's a YouTuber that does this for his job, he just rips apart Game Boys, made this great little board here. You can see it says if you solder the red plus positive wire to this little contact, solder the black negative to the negative side, and then that little, those two little contacts here are what physically touch the pins inside the case to give it power. So you just get a, a way longer battery life, probably almost double than what you would get with those cheaper ones. And it's very simple, it's soldering two wires, and that's it. And finally, if you do want to do that, you'll need a soldering iron. You don't need to get the Weller, which is in the description. This one's around 100 bucks, but anything with the digital temperature gauge, it's built solidly. It's a very well-known brand. I know people that work at tech companies that use these in their labs themselves. It's a great product. I fully recommend it if you just want to buy quality and never have to worry about a soldering iron again. And also, if you want to do the brightness controls, there is one extra wire you have to solder if you're interested and that's it for the parts it's it's very sw simple it's take the old one apart put the new screen in to the new case and then swap all the parts into the new case and then just w attach it it's plug and play 
Now that we got all the parts, let's quickly go over exactly what we're gonna need and what we need to do theoretically, and then I'll actually show you. So first, it mentions that a soldering iron's optional. Again, you need this only for brightness controls. So if you wanna be able to change the brightness, it's one wire, you solder it to the board and then to the little ribbon cable on the new screen, and you'll be able to change the brightness. I'm leaving it as is, I don't do it in the video. If you wanna do it, it's fine. I think it's plenty bright enough. And obviously any brighter you go, the worse the battery life. That's on you. And for our idea is we're gonna have a new case, a new shell, and then we're gonna have our old Game Boy SP. So I have that old Game Boy. Now, first things first, we're gonna disassemble this SP. You'll see me do it, but basically there's a bunch of little screws. You pop out from here, this little connector here, you pop out the ribbon cable to the screen, you pull out the, old, the current screen, take the new screen, you slide it back into the new case after you cut it a little bit so that it can fit the new screen, and you literally just plug it right back in and just reconstruct everything as it was. Very, very simple. So the only real work you're gonna have to do is this trimming stage here. And just so you can view it here, Again, this little hinge here is going to help you figure out the exact side. But you see this little plastic border right here? It's a little plastic border, plus these little lines that connect it, little plastic pieces. After the trims, you're just literally going to take a knife, and you're going to cut that stuff away. So you can see before trim, there's all this plastic here. After trim, it's all cut away. And... That's basically it. You're just cutting the plastic. And you'll see, and I'll show you exactly what I end up doing. But to install the LCD is basically make sure you can take that upper case, put the screen in, attach the little ribbon cable from the screen into this little controller, and then do one little wrap, wrap around here with the cable, and then put the other part of the case on and just literally make sure that it fits and you can close it. That's honestly it. It's pretty simple. Just make sure it all fits. Just for those that want to do it, when you reattach the ribbon cable, you do need to solder from this little point. You already see there's a little piece of solder right there. So you're going to attach a wire from here to Q12B. Q12B contact. And if you look, it is about right here. Q12B. And you can see the wire they put. This little turquoise wire here it goes right up and solders right back to there. So that's why when you hit that middle button, which is right here on the controls itself, you'll be able to change the brightness levels. And that's it. If you don't feel comfortable soldering on something of this small nature, I'd say just don't do it because you could risk messing something up. Other than that, you just reassemble everything. And I hope this helps theoretically, and then you'll actually see me do it and I will be calling out exactly what I'm doing at each step. All right.
guys, you finally made it to the final build. Let's reveal what the screen quality looks like here. Always make sure it powers on too. That's all good. Screen looks great. Now that I know it's good, we can reattach everything. I would always recommend that you don't do everything, rebuild everything, put it together, and then test the turn it on. Once you personally install the screen, try and boot it up early just to make sure it works before you go through the whole process of reassembling and it's not working. But again, you're just going to quickly go back through, put down the finishing touches, some of these outside screws. Once those screws are done, you can reinsert the high capacity battery, put the screws back and turning it on and voila, we see that it looks great. So what we're going to do is now we're going to put a game in and you'll actually see it lined up between a Game Boy Advance SP, original, one with the new screen and even a Nintendo DS. Overall, I'd say this project is absolutely great. You're basically bringing one of your old pieces of tech into the 21st century. The color looks great. You can play the games just as well as you've ever wanted. And Pokemon Trading Card Game, great example. I know a lot of people are getting into Pokemon cards again and collecting them. You see Logan Paul's buying hundreds of thousands of dollars of cards. Gary V saying everyone should buy baseball cards. So great way to get back into Pokemon Trading Card Game. Go get it for the Game Boy SP and play it. And that's it for this video, guys. I hope you really enjoyed it. Definitely let me know how this project goes. If you have any questions, please like, comment, and subscribe. Still a new channel, and hopefully we can grow and continue to do fun new projects. And see you next time.